So time is a quantity which is represented by T which is given by a unit called as second. So what is that one second? One second is related to number of periodic vibrations given by the cesium-133 atom by the cesium atomic clock. The eye should be placed exactly straight to the point of where it points. So this value will be the correct value and accurate value. The error which is associated with the resolution of the, of the instrument itself is called as least count error. Hello everyone, I am Rinda, Faculty of Physics from Vidyashram Pre-University College, Mysuru. Welcoming you all to the session 3 of chapter 2 and that is unit and measurement. In this chapter, we have studied the units, respective units for certain quantities as well as estimation of size for the smaller size as well as the bigger size and the mass. Different types of instrument which are used to measure mass of certain quantities and range of length, size as well as mass. So in today's class, we are studying the measurement of time and certain errors. So measurement of time. So time is a quantity, right? So time is a quantity which is represented by T which is given by a unit called as second. What is the unit of time? It is seconds. So time is represented, that is T is represented by S where S is the SI unit of time. So one second, so what is this one second? One second, it is equal to the vibrations made by cesium-133 atom. Okay, so what is it? Cesium-133 making certain vibrations and it is related to one second? Yes. In order to measure any interval of time, we use atomic standard of time that is depends upon vibrations number of vibrations which is related to one second so atomic standard time it is based on the periodic vibrations which is produced by a clock which clock it is a cesium clock so what exactly the process going on you might get confused see Cesium clock means it is the cesium-133, okay? The cesium-133 atom, the particles in cesium-133 atom, it undergoes certain transitions, that is it has got ground state. So it undergoes transitions in hyperfine lines of the ground. These two lines are the ground state. Hyperfine lines which is present in the ground state here. The transition of the particles between these hyperfine lines emits certain radiation and vibration is induced. Because of the radiation there is certain vibrations and that vibration is said to be These many times the vibration takes place in one second. So it is in one second. So when the transition of the particles takes place between two hyperfine lines of the ground state of cesium-133 atom, there is emission of certain radiations which is responsible for vibration of these many times which is equal to one second. That is said to be one second. So this is the definition of one second, okay? That is a periodic vibration of the cesium atom, atomic clock. 
So that is nothing but cesium atomic clock. So hope you all understood what is that cesium atomic clock. So in India, the Indian standard time is maintained by using the cesium atomic clock which is located at National Physical Laboratory that is NPL at New Delhi. So this is all about measurement of time. How exactly you measure that one second. Time is a physical quantity whose SI unit is said to be second and the symbol is represented as S. So what is that one second? One second is related to number of periodic vibrations given by the cesium-133 atom by the cesium atomic clock. So that how is the vibration produced? That is the particles makes a transition and because of the transition it results in radiation. The radiation is responsible for this vibration. So many times we get vibrations responsible for these many vibrations in one second which is the definition of one second. Okay. So this is all about measurement of time. So now coming to errors. So what is this error? You measure, right? You go, you do some experiments, you measure certain quantities. You measure liters or you measure kilograms or you measure meters or you measure any time or degree Celsius. It can be anything. You measure certain quantities and the result is and the finally you get a result. How the outcome is a result. But do you think that result is very much accurate, is very much correct? Do you really feel it? No. There will be certain small errors due to the surrounding things or personally we have done some experimental, the procedure might be wrong or experimental conditions like humidity or temperature or voltage supply, anything might be wrong because of which there is certain error. It is at least a 0.1% of error also we can obtain if specific rules and regulations or the specific conditions are not maintained that it is very normal okay so errors there is a the foundation of experiment itself is a measurement and the outcome is nothing but result and the result will always contain certain error so we just try to eliminate a larger error so that a slight error is okay for us. We can edge, get edges to slight errors but not the greater errors. So that there is certain method which we will be studying in the following slides. So I will teach you the following methods which are used to concise the errors. Okay. So it is the result contains certain uncertainty which is called as errors. Each and every measurement has got results. So the result will have certain uncertainty and that uncertainty is called as errors. So now coming to accuracy, whatever value you get, the whatever value you get along with the errors and you have, you will be checking the value which you have got with the true value. So when this value, whatever you have got is is very closely related to the true value then that is called as accuracy. Accuracy is nothing but the value whatever you have obtained is very close to the true value then that concept is called as accuracy. So you got to know what is meant by error. Error it is the uncertainty which is present in the result that is the outcome of the measurements. So that is all about errors. So what is this accuracy? Accuracy is nothing but the measurement whatever you have obtained will match with the true value. That is a true value of a quantity so that it is known as that concept is known as accuracy. So here it's error is over. Now accuracy it's done coming to precision. So it is the precise one. Precision it is limit to what extent the quantity is measured. It is a precise one that is known as precision. Okay. And you got to know what is error. You got to know what is accuracy as well as precision. Okay. Error it is the uncertainty which is considered which is present in the result. Okay. So when it comes to 
accuracy it is the measured value will uh, if it is close to the true value then that is called as accurate value and precision it is limit to what extent the quantity is said to be measured okay and the accuracy depends upon the precision also okay so next is types of error let us see how many types of errors are there there are two types of errors that is systematic errors and random errors when it comes to systematic errors there are three types of systematic errors that is instrumental errors imperfection in procedure and personal error so types of error which is very much important so remember keep this in your mind types of error types of error there are two types of error that is systematic error as well as random errors in systematic error we have the rest three branches that is instrumental error imperfection in procedure as well as personal error see this instrumental error what is this instrumental error the error in instrument itself for example if you take a thermometer and check the temperature of a boiling water so the temperature of a boiling water is said to be 100 degrees celsius right so somewhere it shows the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius and somewhere it shows 1 or 3 or 1 or 4 degrees celsius so what does that mean that is because of the instrument the designing of the instrument there is a fault in the designing itself so that is known as instrumental error so there is nothing that you have got to do with it so that error is nothing but instrumental error so you're clear with instrumental error coming to imperfection in procedure so what is this imperfection in procedure it is like when you undertake certain procedure you won't take it systematically that is nothing but imperfection in procedure for example if you take the same thermometer you check the body temperature the body temperature you where do you check the body temperature under the armpit right so when you take the temp body temperature when you calculate the body temperature using a thermometer under the armpit it is the region where it shows the temperature lower than the actual body temperature so that is a procedure which you are taking in another way so that is imperfection in procedure because of which there is an error again the procedure you take uh, which you undertake in a systematic way because of that all those things there is certain errors that is known as imperfection the procedure which you undertake now second type of error is completed the third type of error that is nothing but personal error in systematic error the third type of error is a personal error what is this personal error it's all about your view okay you will check a pointer a pointer will be pointing this is a scale wherein pointer is pointing properly over this region okay so when you visualize from this way what happens you get your pointer somewhere this side when you visualize correctly from the center your pointer lies exact in this line and this is the other value whatever you have and this is the rest of the values and again here you have got the rest of the values and here is the other direction you are visualizing so this figure is called as a figure b and figure c so when you observe from this way if you if this is your eye eye point when you observe the pointer towards this direction any of the side values you note down thinking that it is the correct one correct value which is pointed over there so this method is a wrong method when it comes to this method you are observing from the other direction so again you will mark some other point as your point right so that is also a wrong method wherein the errors increase the error in such cases increases lastly this one it is the right method to observe the pointer the pointer exactly it point the eye should be placed exactly straight to the pointer where it points so this value will be the correct value and accurate value so the error can be concise so this is a personal error whatever we do okay so 
Errors are of two types, systematic errors and random errors. Systematic errors can be instrumental error, imperfection in procedure as well as personal errors. So there are three types of errors. Coming to the random errors. Random errors are the errors which and it occurs due to voltage or temperature change or humidity, any surrounding atmospheric changes. So that is called as random errors. And this random errors occurs irregularly. So these are types of errors. Errors are of two types, systematic as well as random errors. Systematic errors are of three types. That is instrumental error, imperfection in procedure as well as personal errors. So coming to the next topic that is let us study about least count error. So, so what is that least count? Coming to the measurement, you take a measuring scale. So it has got certain measurements over there for up from zero till large numbers. So if you take a meter scale, zero to 100 centimeters, centimeters is the unit, right? So now here when it comes to the measurement scale, it is a measurement scale contains least number to the highest number. The range is from least to highest. So each and every measuring instrument has got certain least numbers that is least measurements. So that least measurement is known as this least count. The least value, the least number in the measuring instrument is called as least count. So the very small value that can be measured by the measuring instrument is called as least count and the least count error it is nothing but the error associated with the resolution of the instrument itself. The error which is associated with the resolution of the, of the instrument itself is called as least count error. So in order to decrease the least count error or in order to decrease the errors, what has to be induced accuracy has to be induced there should be accurate the value should be accurate for the measured value it should be very close to the true value that is called as accuracy right so the value should be accurate in order to have an accurate value high the precision is must and should i told you the accuracy depends upon the precision right so the precision is must and should higher the precision lower the error obtained okay error can be reduced so this is all about least count errors and next let us study about absolute error relative error as well as percentage error so what is this absolute error when you're measuring you just don't get fixed to only one trial whatever you do they ask you to do two, three, four trials or five to six trials. Why? Because each and every measurement has got certain errors and that errors remains as it is. Sometimes it is greater, sometimes it is least or sometimes you get a correct accurate value. But you can't predict whether you have got an accurate value with one trial itself. So in order to concise the errors, you are undertaking too many trials. Okay. Similarly, you are con considering too many values. Too many trials is equal to too many values and taking all those values, you just get into one and get a precise average value. That average value will be accurate. That is, it will be equal to the true value. So that errors are concise. Okay. So let us see that. Suppose experimental value for for the performed experiments are you don't know which value exactly it is because I'm not performing any experiments here. So let us take an algebraic term. Algeb unknown terms are taken as an alphabetical way. So let me consider alphabetical order that is let, let me take A as my unknown term. Arithmetic mean of the value is equal to A1 that is the value of first experiment. A2 the value of second trial. A3 is the value of third trial and is go, it goes up till AN that is the value of the nth trial and this is number of trials taken. Okay, so these are the value of n number of trials and this is number of trials undertaken 
or it also can be written as this kind of method occupies a wide space. So in order to reduce that we can also write in the form of summation that is summation i is equal to 1 up till n. So in place of i you can write a1 plus a2 plus goes up till a n and the trials which are undertaken is n trials which is represented over here. Either in this format we can represent the arithmetic mean or we can represent in this form. So there are two forms of representation of arithmetic mean. So this arithmetic mean can also be called as true value. Why do we perform arithmetic mean taking average in order to match up with the true value. So it is also it can also be called as true value. So absolute error of the measurement. So what is this absolute error of the measurement? It is defined as magnitude of difference between the individual measurement and true value of the quantity denoted by modulus delta A. Hey, did you understand anything by reading this definition? I, few of them might have understood and few of them know. So what I tell is just pictureize, visualize the definition, just read the definition, think over it, just put it as a picture or put it as a formula. You will just get to know what is the definition, what the definition tells. Magnitude of magnitude which means number of difference between the individual measurement and true value. What is this difference between? It is the minus that is subtraction. It is the difference between individual measurement and the true value. So which are the individual measurements? A1, A2, A3 goes up till AN. Those are the individual measurements. So it is a1, it is an individual measurement and the true value, the true value can be arithmetic mean, A mean, okay. And it is denoted by what? Modulus of delta A. So it is denoted by delta A. So this is nothing but the absolute error. So what is the absolute error? It is the difference between individual value as well as the true value and it is denoted by modulus of delta A. And this can be either positive or negative but it is always represented in positive. Okay, so that is all about absolute error. So let us see how the absolute error can be written. So it can be written as delta A. This is for A1. This is for A2 which is equal to A2 minus A mean. Similarly, it goes up till delta A base N which is equal to A N minus A mean. So this is how it goes the absolute error of the measurement. So I hope you are clear with arithmetic mean as well as absolute error of the measurement. So coming to the next one that is taking mean of the absolute error. So you have got mean of the absolute error of a physical quantity is represented in this manner. So delta A mean is equal to modulus of delta A1 plus goes up till nth term divided by n number of trials which can also be written as it is similar way to that of the arithmetic mean which we have done here which can also be written as delta A mean is equal to summing up that is summation I is equal to 1 till N delta A to the base I divided by N. This is the other format you are using in order to find out delta A mean. That is mean of the absolute error. So now for a single measurement we can use that is A is equal to A mean plus or minus delta A mean. 
this is for the single measurement so when you that means it says clearly says that a lies between the positive as well as negative of the errors so it clearly tells that measurement of a physical quantity lies between negative as well as positive term apart from this we even study what is relative errors as well as percentage error so relative error it is ratio of mean of absolute error to the mean value of the quantity measured so the relative error it is nothing but relative error so what is this relative error it is the ratio of mean or absolute error so it is mean absolute error okay this is a mean of the absolute error to the mean value of the quantity mean value of the quantity so this is nothing but a relative error so what is the relative error relative error it is the ratio of mean value of absolute error to the mean value of the quantity see while reading you won't get to know like what exactly it is it is like by halting things when you read you may not know like what exactly comes after what right so when you put into a formula type or pictureize it or imagination it is very easy to give the definition so now by looking at this itself you can give the definition of the relative error so just if you have the idea of this concept this definition is very easy what is this relative error relative error it is the ratio of mean of absolute error to the mean of the physical quantity that is the quantity which is measured now coming to the percentage error relative error itself is expressed in the percentage so when it is like percentage you know percentage something into 100% 100% this is the signature value whenever the percentage comes right so it is very much easy for relative error it's if you multiply this with 100% that itself give, gives you a percentage error so that is represented in the form it is not a relative error it will be delta a when it comes to percentage error having this idea of error that is arithmetic mean absolute error percentage error as well as relative error let us solve a numerical and now when it comes to numerical it is not actually a problem read the question properly write down the given data substitute for certain formula and then easily you can get your 5 marks as i told you so in exam there are the problematic main for you all is sixth main which consists of five numericals out of which you will have to attend three numericals and each numerical consists of five marks as you all know and this is very much easier this are, these are the basic steps for you to understand problems okay so now let us read the question properly it is we measure the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum okay in successive measurement the readings turn out to be 2.36 second 2.56 seconds 2.42 seconds 2.71 as well as 2.80 seconds so when it is seconds what is that we are measuring what quantity are we measuring that is nothing but time we are measuring time time is represented in certain seconds any x or y or z any number with which is associated with a unit that unit is second and one second is related to the vibration which is produced by the atomic clock that is cesium atomic clock as you all know okay when it comes to time 
is represented in seconds and we have measured the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum in certain int and we have got the certain interval of time it, that is the measurement and now we have to calculate the absolute error relative error and percentage error so i told you error during measurement there is certain kind of error the method is same the procedure which they have taken in this trial is similarly taken in this trial as well as this trial that trial and here so what happens to that see the number the variation in number okay precise value we just use these methods that is absolute error and relative error as well as percentage error and the main thing what we use is taking the average of it okay so let us proceed with the terms that is given t1 that is trial 1 the time in trial 1 the time is given as 2.36 seconds in trial 2 the time is 2.56 seconds in trial 3 the time taken is 2.42 seconds in trial 4 again the time taken is 2.71 seconds in trial 5 the time taken is 2.80 seconds so so these are the given terms to find what is that you have to find it is absolute error relative error as well as percentage error as well as the percentage error what you have to find out so the formula you all know you have studied previously so same method you will have to induce here so that is so solution can go like this t mean the mean time is taken as 2.36 plus 2.56 plus 2.42 plus 2.71 plus 2.80 divided by how many trials that is n it was n no so it is n number of trials go to your previous slide I have written n number of trials similarly here it is n number of trials so 1 2 3 4 and 5 5 trials so the value after calculation is which goes like 2.624 seconds or we can approximate it to 2.62 seconds we have given 2.62 seconds so that is the average value so you can tell that it is the accurate it is nearly equal to the true value like that so in order to calculate the absolute error what do we do <coughs> we just take absolute delta t1 is equal to it is like difference of the individual value with the true value that is nothing but absolute error so that is delta t1 it is individual value is 2.36 minus the true value what you have got is 2.62 and similarly delta t2 can be 2.56 minus 2.62 similarly t3 is equal to 2.42 minus 2.62 and delta t4 value is 2.71 minus 2.62 and delta t5 value will be 2.80 minus 2.62 so these are the values mean values which we have got here okay that is that is subtracted with the individual values which we have got here and the value turn out to be minus 0.26 again this value turn out to be minus 0 
and this value turn out to be minus 0.20 and this is 0 0.0918. So what are these? These are seconds. So it can be written as S, 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 S and S. So it is the unit of time is seconds. So these are the absolute error. So now you will have to take mean of the absolute error. You can't take all this as absolute errors. You will have to take mean out of it. So what do you do? Summing up all. Minus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.18 seconds divided by 5. What do you get? 5, 4 divided by 5 and it is 0 0.11 seconds, whatever you get. Okay. And now, and the mean oscillation, you can tell that the mean oscillation lies between whatever we have discussed over here, that is, del A is equal to for an individual for a single measurement you have done here that is A is equal to A min plus or minus delta A min that is we have considered the true value as well as absolute mean absolute error. Similarly we go with this that is we are considering the true value that is 2.62 seconds plus or minus mean absolute error that is 0.11 seconds. So you can tell that the value lies between negative as well as the positive of this given value. So coming to the next one, as the arithmetic mean of this absolute error is 0.11 seconds and there is error in the tenth of the second. So considering the hundred place of a second is not is not required. So what do we consider? That is 0.1 seconds. So considering 0.1 seconds, let us calculate the percentage error. That is delta T is equal to arithmetic mean of the absolute error. So I can consider as 0.1 second with the arithmetic mean of a quantity or the temperature which is uh, or the time taken as 2.6. So what is the answer we get? So delta T is equal to 0.1 second divided by 2.6 into it should be 100 percentage since we are considering the percentage error. On considering this, the final answer, whatever we get is said to be 4 percent. That is delta T is equal to 4 percent. So this is the percentage error. So you have calculated the absolute error, relative error as well as percentage error. This is how you solve knowing the concept. So the theory thing has to be fixed in your mind. You should know how the theory goes on with certain quantity and with the help of it you can solve the problems. Before solving the problems one main thing which you all have to know is learn theory well. Understand the theory concepts well. So in today's class of ours, we have studied number of vibrations which are produced by cesium-133 atoms which results in one second that is measurement of time as well as the types of error. There are two types of error that is systematic error, random errors. Systematic error is of three types that is instrumental error, error in the procedure as well as personal errors and random errors it occurs irregularly due to surrounding uh, temperature etc voltage fluctuations or voltage voltage supply like likewise these are the randomly occurring errors so in errors we are even studying absolute errors so what is that error what is accuracy what is precision you all got to know and we have studied errors that is absolute errors relative errors as well as percentage errors how to tackle with the sum with respect to those errors so now i hope you're clear with this concept of today's session and let us meet in our next session thank you one and all have a good day